Get down here, Merc. We finally had it, the first playable glimpse of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, this is just a demo, not the actual game, but I just couldn't resist. Now, I was actually considering the possibility that I would just go complete radio silence when it came to this game. Because although it is a remake of Seven, and I got a strong feeling I know where it's going story-wise, I kind of wanted to not spoil anything about it for myself. But once the demo was on the PSN, I had to download it. Hands where I can see them. Have fun. So let's just say I have opinions about this game, and they're not all bad, and they're not all good either. So I'm hoping the game turns out a little bit differently than what I'm seeing here, in the sense that, well, I mean, this was the bombing mission at the Sector, what, 4 reactor? I forget which reactor this was. Yeah, I have to excuse the sound of my voice. Drop the weapon! You got this. Yeah, what he said! I'll have to ask that you excuse the, uh, excuse the sound of my voice. I've recently gotten over a pretty bad case of influenza. Uh, the virus is long gone, but man, it's still messing up my throat. I got a lot of coughing and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to make sure I don't cough into the microphone. That'll blow your eardrums out, I think. Anyway, Final Fantasy VII Remake. The gameplay seems similar to that of Final Fantasy XV, a game that launched, what, three years ago or so? It's real time this time, instead of the active time battle system that we had seen in the old Final Fantasy games. Although it does come across as being a tad more sluggish than XV. Now, I had to describe XV to some people as sort of like... <clears throat> So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> this is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, uh, uh. Real joy to work with, though. Real joy to look at, too. Here we go. Looks are what people notice first. Guess I'm not on the same page as people. I'd say you're not even reading the same book. Enough. We're done here. Or even the same... Give it a rest. Come on, nobody do something this crazy just for money. They may not think you're a true believer, but you know what I think? Not interested. What? <laughs> Which? Uh... You better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. I had described 15's battle system as sort of being like Devil May Cry on crack because it was um, really hectic and you had to do a lot of attacks and dodges and you had friends helping you, so it was, it was crazy. Perhaps it's a bit more manageable. I mean, you only have one or two characters on your team in this demo and it's probably only going to go as high as three. So, it's probably not going to be quite as crazy. 
Something I can say that I do appreciate here is they are putting a little bit more effort into giving personality to these other characters. Now, of course, uh, fans of the series are going to be aware of the way Cloud acted in the beginning of this game and be aware of the way Barrett acted in the beginning of this game and the personality characteristics seems to be rather consistently applied in this game. Cloud acts like Cloud. Barrett acts like Barrett. But you had the other three members of Avalanche, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. And those three characters, well, I mean, they had some degree of personality. Biggs, not so much. But Jesse and Wedge, short. And they're giving them a little bit more of... Not so fast. We've got company. And in some ways, though, I feel like it's um, maybe a little bit on the nose with the way the characters are acting. I mean, Jesse's attraction to Cloud was fairly clear in the original game, of course. But in this game, it's a little overt. Constantly making comments like she did earlier, like, oh, he's a, he's a looker and all that kind of stuff. Maybe a little bit on the nose. The uh, concept of subtlety is perhaps lost on the developers working on this version of the game. Some of these fights take a little bit longer than it feels like maybe they should. I know there was an easier way and a quicker way for me to take out that guard dog, but you know. So we have a real-time combat system which resembles a slightly slower version of that which we've seen in Final Fantasy XV. What I'm hoping is that the game doesn't quite fall into the trap that we had seen Final Fantasy XIII fall into. Now, of course, it definitely looks like they did here in this mission because it's extraordinarily linear. You're running down corridors, you open a door, you run down a hallway, you fight an enemy, open a door, run down into a room, fight an enemy, that kind of thing. But I'm hoping that this... I mean, the original... The original game had these dungeons like this, and this is, though this is not a one-for-one -one reproduction of the bombing mission that's seen in the original game, it's pretty faithful, I'd have to say. And in the original game, it was a very linear progression you made from one end to the other. Soldiers may attack on command, but I hear they make good guard dogs, too. Bet you've seen a few reactors. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako storage? <sighs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Or is he a loyal little doggy? <clears throat> Have it your way, Mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door open soon. In three, two... Damn, I'm good. Who's there? Door! Oh, wait! In the original game, it seemed strange to me that Avalanche That's bothered right. to hire Cloud to take part of this bombing mission. Because it seemed like between the three members of Avalanche plus Barrett. They should have been able to handle pretty much anything that they ran across, except for maybe the Guard Scorpion at the end. Here, it seems pretty clear why they hired Cloud. They hired Cloud in order to engage all the guards while they snuck through. And it's like, finally, we have some reason why Cloud's here. He always knows just what to say. Cut it out! It's a good thing I know someone who can get us the passcodes. <sighs> Pity no one else at command will talk to us, but what can you do? Huh. And we're good. Careful in there. <clears throat> I got this place covered. Ooh, a hint at a potential story change. It seems as though in this game, Avalanche is part of a just one cell of a larger eco-terrorist group. 
you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? Tifa and I... <sighs> no subtlety with Jesse. No subtlety whatsoever. appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. This pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit, it's here sucking up Marco! It doesn't rest, and it doesn't care! You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako <clears throat> is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> Say that again! <clears throat> I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Our lives are on the line now. You listening, Merc? One false move. And that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some places a sword just can't reach. <laughs> just bear with him for me, would you? Huh. Yeah. Should have asked for more money. <laughs> We're seeing some commonality here with the original game. The scene in the elevator, for example, of Barrett going and getting upset with Cloud because Cloud doesn't really seem to give a shit about Avalanche's goals. Of course he doesn't. Or perhaps I don't I don't want to get into it here. But it's my personal theory that a lot of Cloud's personality is based on what he expects people think of him. So Cloud acts the way he does in front of Barrett because that's the way he thinks Barrett expects him to act. Now, he's just a mercenary that was hired for the job, so of course he doesn't actually give a shit about the goals of Avalanche or anything like that, so he's going to act like an asshole. Or at least he will, because that's the way he thinks everybody expects him to. Heh, <laughs> nice Barrett. So you had that conversation there. It was extended. They're fleshing out these conversations What's quite a bit. Here? A laser security system. Great. Those things will hurt more than your pride if you're careless. They'll cut you down to size and then some. But I'm guessing you've done this kind of thing before. Yeah. Figure out the timing of the lasers. Then make a move when they cycle off. Exactly. I'll go first. Nothing like a little danger to get the blood pumping. Hey! Just keep those baby blues of yours on me. Of course, there was a, a button pressing mini game in the original game to get through a door, but that wasn't until the second reactor that you went and bombed. Of course, I gotta break up the gameplay a little bit. I guarantee you, this is something we're gonna see multiple times throughout the game, running through these 
these laser beams here. Got to watch the pattern and then run through. But this was not in the original game. But I'm, I mean, I'm okay with new things being added. As long as they don't substantially take away from what was in the original game. And I feel like they're going to. And once we see it, I will comment on that. Yeah, I've already broken those up. <laughs> they must have fallen from their floor above. Gotta count the damn things. There we go. Like a walk in the park, huh? Yeah, but Barrett took some damage. <laughs> not a yeah, but not on Barrett. On to the objective. Look, Spending a lot more time with Jesse. In the original game, Jesse was the member of Avalanche that spent the most amount of time with Cloud and Barrett while they were assaulting a reactor. And she's following them further along in here, too. So that makes sense. And they're also, since they're putting much more effort into fleshing out these characters, they're giving her a lot more to say. And that's definitely a good thing, because you... They said before that they were fleshing out the game, because the original... Uh, well, this first sort of episode of Final Fantasy VII Remake is only really going to take place during the Mako, uh, the Midgar sections of the game. Now, uh, spoiler alert, but you don't spend an enormous amount of time in the original Seven in Midgar. You're eventually going to leave that area. Now, it, it, the game definitely feels like a different game made some substantial changes to the way like you traverse across the map and all that kind of stuff after the Midgar portions, which is probably why they chose that to end this game and start the next one. Because the game is going to feel different from that point forward. But they're fleshing out what is probably really one person playing through their first times, maybe like five or six hours worth of gameplay out to a potentially... I'm going to assume this will be between a 20 and 30 hour RPG. So you're going to have to do a hell of a lot of adding lots of things and all of that in order to... First. Huh? Soldier first class. Doesn't go into the 20s. the hell are you talking about? I mean your age, not your goddamn rank. I... Uh... <clears throat> Though for all I know, a soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Mm-hmm. Guess that make you a one-year-old, huh? Live and learn! You gotta flesh out a lot of things in order to extend the Midgar section of a game out to a full game. How do you do that? Well, you take these minor characters, like Jesse, and you flesh them out, you give them more personality, because they're going to spend a lot more time on the screen. So that makes sense. That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Let's get down there. Take, for example, the mission that we're playing here. If I were to go and play this section of the game in the original game, realistically, we'd take 20 minutes, 20 minutes or so to a half an hour. You could just jet right through it and it wouldn't take very long. And in fact, this section of the game was in the original Final Fantasy VII's demo that was in the game Tobal No. 1. She did own, bought that actually after. No subtlety, none whatsoever. This section of the game was in the original demo that came with Tobal No. 1. I actually bought Tobal number one after Final Fantasy VII, so I didn't buy it for the demo, but I did play the demo. <laughs> of course, it was after I played the original game, so that makes a lot of sense. But anyway, <laughs> if you were to play through that demo, it really doesn't take you very long. Now, the first time, now this is this gameplay you're looking at here was the second time I played through this demo. The first time I played through took. 
I don't know, an hour and a half or so. This only takes 45 minutes, because I'm not getting lost. I'm, I know how to fight the battles better. Everything just going through quicker. So this is taking 45 minutes. I'm going to call it an hour and a half. So it's like three times as long as in the original game to get through the bombing mission of this reactor. You think if we fell in, we sink right down to the bottom? To the planet's core? No. The pump would suck us back up. <laughs> How comforting. The Mako reactors are drawing upon the lifeblood of the planet. And the scale of this, uh, this game, the way we're looking at everything's in 3D and all that kind of stuff, doesn't really give me any more of a greater perspective of the size of everything. Because the way that the game looked originally, like it was all pre-rendered backgrounds and your 3D characters were running around on top of it. They had these big wide shots, long distances down to seeing the big pools of Mako down there that they were pumping up. So even though everything's bigger here, it doesn't quite feel bigger. It doesn't necessarily need to, though. All right, let's see if Little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are. That you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! Fine. What about the timer? Your call, Merc. Pretty cocky, ain't you? <gasps> you double crossing! Heads up! What in the hell? So we're fighting the guard scorpion, or what is it called? Scorpion sentinel here. Now this boss battle is definitely where they added in a lot of extra, extra gameplay here. This thing takes a hell of a lot longer, and I'd definitely say it's more difficult than the boss at this section in the original game. Of course the combat is completely different. It's real time instead of turn base. It's also a little bit different in that Cloud doesn't have all the magic. All Barrett really had was his uh, his attack and his limit break. Cloud had fire and lightning magic. In this Cloud has the fire magic. Barrett actually has the lightning and a cure materia so he could cure it if I wanted to do that. But this battle is going to take a hell of a lot longer and require quite a bit more effort and tactics and all that kind of stuff. The only thing you really had to worry about with the original boss was when it rose, it brought its tail up into the air, it didn't attack it. You waited for it to bring the tail back down because it would counterattack with a laser. Even if you ignored that, the boss was still not particularly difficult if you knew what they were doing. This feels like, regardless of how well I was actually playing the game, and I wasn't really doing it all that well here, this boss was still going to take a good 10 minutes or so. So, <laughs> it's a lot of attacking. The thing feels a little bit like a damage sponge. Now, perhaps if I had better tactics or I had a better idea of where to attack it or how to attack it better, the boss would go down quicker. But I'm smacking this thing a lot. And I'm kind of hoping that some of the bosses later on in the game aren't going to be attack spam fests like I'm looking at right here. A barrier? 
I'm sure the game will play a little bit different once I don't suck at it. So what's your brilliant plan, genius? Damn it. I do like, I mean, aside from the name change, they do seem to be putting a lot of effort with the enemy variety and all that kind of stuff in order to make the enemy types and all that feel familiar, or they're built very much around the art style of the original game. Like the guard scorpion looks very much like the scorpion sentinel. The little floating eye things were an enemy that we saw in the original game. Those guns that Barrett shot down that were out of the cloud's reach were enemies from the original game. Although you didn't encounter them in the Maker Reactor as far as I remember. You didn't do that until the second mission. But, I mean, still, it's, it's nice to see callbacks to the original game. It's stuff like that that really tickle the fanboy's fancy. Of course, the, uh... This large play field and the fact that everything is done in real time does award them a lot of opportunities when it comes to increasing the scale of the fight, making it feel more epic and all that kind of stuff. Now I can only imagine how eventually the battle with the one-winged angel is going to end up looking. That's going to be fucking incredible. Hope they don't screw it up. But this thing is jumping all over the goddamn place. It's here, it's there, it's running across the walls, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's huge. Thing showed you how it's done. Come on, we've got to move. Where should be covering our way out? Go, go, go! Uh oh, time to go. Of course, we saw the same thing in the first game where you set the bomb and then you had to get out real quick. So, if that wasn't here, I would have shit myself. Really would have shit myself. Out of anger and angry shit. I wonder what relevance the choice of time that I had between 20 and 30 minutes really had. Is there some reward for doing it in less time? Hmm. Well, 20 minutes is more than enough time to get out of here. Especially since the timer stops multiple times. Okay? Do I look okay? Help a girl out, would 
No subtlety, Jesse. No subtlety. Come this way. This room should lead us straight to Barry. Of course, you did have to. You did have to pick her up. You did have to rescue her. She got her foot stuck in the original game. So, of course, this remake, everything's scaled up. The the uh, threat had to be scaled up too. So something go, fell on her. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, jeez, Cloud, back up. <laughs> We're running out of time. Shut up and climb. You're not helping. Sorry, it just it keeps me focused. I'll freak out if I don't talk. Have it your way. These little things, uh, short bits of conversation, are important for character development. Jesse didn't have a whole hell of a lot of personality, so they little things like that can really build a character up. Barrett! I've got you covered! Find us a way out of here! But then... Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've got Soldier Boy with me. X, Soldier Boy. They're here! Of course, they have to throw a bunch of extra enemies at you on your way out. A lot of these are... you take them out pretty quick. This seems like a strangely long hallway. I think the exit, the entrance and the exits would be a little bit faster. Oh, another sweeper. Something that's actually going to require some effort. Of course, I'm speeding things up, so this doesn't take forever. <laughs> One of the advantages of recording before you talk to it. Made it the bulk of the way back and have the majority of the time. As long as you don't waste time picking up treasure chests that you're obviously not going to need, you'll be fine. Most of these enemies get you take them out pretty easily, pretty quickly. <laughs> now we do have another enemy here, the Shock Trooper. Now you saw the Shock Troopers, and now it's another game from the original game. Another enemy from the original game, rather. And the, uh, what's it called? The, whatever mode I'm in right now is the one that's more effective engaging them. But this is definitely a tougher enemy and the kind of thing that they're probably going to end up having to face more of later. A lot more blocking is involved and all that kind of stuff. There's only one here, but we'll see more in a bit. They're also weak to fire, though. So game ramps up in difficulty, I'm probably going to have to spend a lot more time paying attention to the weaknesses of enemies, paying more attention to their attacks and blocking and dodging appropriately. But in this demo, there's not really a whole lot to it. <laughs> as long as you block, which I'm not doing here, and then counter with your uh, strong attack, and then fire, perhaps. Fireworks. You can fuck him up pretty good. There we go. Finally figured out blocking. Yeah, see, look at that. I got him. He's fucked. I do like how time slows down, but doesn't stop when you're in the menu. Kind of a throwback a little bit to the active time battle system, where time never stopped. And when you had to go through your menus quickly and you made your selections quickly, quickly, or else you were just gonna uh, get your ass kicked. Let's switch it up. You almost got us killed. So did you. Seems to say that every time you almost die.
sir. Take that as a yes. Okay, that was pretty cool. All right, come on. Now here is my biggest complaint. Our bomb that we set blew up the reactor. Small explosion wrecked the machinery, that was it. Then President Shinra ordered the rest of the reactor blown completely up. Now, I know there's not a chance in hell that anybody from Square is watching this, but it happened if by some miracle you are looking for reactions to see how people are people think of the game or whatever here's the only advice I'm really gonna give change that get rid of that scene for the love of God it's important it is very important that Avalanche was responsible for the explosion of the reactor it's very important that they are responsible for all the people that died all the lives that were disrupted in Midgar it's important it's it's just important that Avalanche was responsible I know you have to you have to wind it back a little bit to... You think people need to be able to sympathize with your characters, and the only way they can sympathize with the characters is if they're overall good things and they'll do bad stuff, but no. The fact that Avalanche were the ones that bombed that reactor is a very important part of the story. They did something terrible. They thought that they were doing a good thing, but in reality, Barrett was doing it for revenge. I don't know about Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse, but Barrett and Tifa... They were just out for revenge, and they did a bad thing. It may have been for a good cause, but they did a bad thing. And it's important that you carry that through. Please, for the love of God, change it. Let Avalanche destroy the damn reactor. <laughs> 